Uh, we're going to be talking about um, future coexistence issues between 6G um, and current users of the 7 to 17.7 gigahertz range. So I'm, I'm Declan. I'm Neil. I'm Andrew. All right, so first we're going to talk about uh, this uh, frequency schematic. Um, so um, 6G is going to live somewhere between 7 and 20 gigahertz. Uh, so this is uh, the range that we are going to be working with. Uh, within this range uh, are two uh, major frequency bands that are used for a variety of applications, the X-band and the Q-band. They're used from every, anywhere from space research to weather broadcasting. Um, the block highlighted in blue, labeled NASA, is the FCC's allocation for space research, um, both uplink and downlink, and highlighted in orange are um, bands that are dedicated towards uplink and downlink or um, fixed satellite uh, service for fixed satellite services for NTPSs. So now we're going to overview kind of like what 6G is. Um, so 6G is the sixth generation wireless technology. It's the successor to 5G technology, which other groups have talked about. Um, so there's a large part of 6G that is expected to operate between 7 and 20 gigahertz, and it's expected to have higher capacity and lower latency than 5G. Um, so what 6G will be used for, um, 6G is going to be used for communication, computation, and sensing all in one system. Um, this includes like transportation, emergency response, and also cons consumer um, products and industry. Um, so 6G would require like an expansion of communication. So there are three additional bands in comparison to 5G. So you can see 5G, um, the bands that it operates in dark blue, and then uh, the comparison of like where 6G will operate. So there's going to be kind of a higher frequency, a, lo a lower frequency, and then one right in the middle, which is the one that we're kind of um, focusing on in this presentation. Um, 6G will also have kind of a key machine learning component that will help with like um, improving signal processing. So now we're going to take a moment to discuss space research. So space research um, generally takes place in the 7 to uh, 8 plus 4 gigahertz band. That is where NASA is, that is a more specific range than where all of space research is, but it generally takes place in the X band. Uh, and it's used for um, NASA's rovers, it's used for NASA's communication, it's also used for satellite communication in general and for weather broadcasting. Next slide. Um, the Space Communications and Navigation Program, or SCAN, uh, speaks on behalf of NASA and coordinates with the FCC and other telecommunications agencies to ensure that NASA has the frequencies that it needs for all of its uh, programs. Um, and over here, the Space Frequency Coordination Group, the SFCG, is able to informally resolve any allocation discrepancies and help allocate frequencies for different space research groups. Uh, so moving on, we're going to talk about our next uh, comment, which is going to be low Earth orbit broadband satellites, our NGSO FSS satellites. Um, so to go over them briefly, uh, uh, LEO broadband satellites, we are referring to global networks of uh, fixed satellite systems um, that blanket uh, the Earth. Um, as, of, uh, as of this year, the FCC has received uh, many applications from many different corporations uh, for over 70,000 satellites uh, within the next uh, 10 years. Um, as has been talked about in previous presentations, uh, there is a lot of controversy around the release of these broadband satellite systems. Um, this picture right here is actually an example of like interference that is currently taking place. This was taken from a uh, telescope in Lowell, Arizona, um, trying to take a photograph of like a galaxy group. And all of those light beams, uh, this picture was taken in 2019 after Starlink uh, released its first uh, few satellites. Um, those light rays are light interference from those satellites. Uh, so shortly after this, uh, is when Starlink uh, released DarkSat, um, but this is an example of how our interference is already taking place. Um, so now we'll talk about coexistence issues. Um, the, this is our interference geometry um, with reference to FSS. All of these uh, values that have been taken, that uh, are displayed, have been calculated using um, uh, data pulled from Starlink specifications uh, and schedule S technical uh, documents. Um, and as you can see in the red, the red would, uh, is an example of an interference path. So now we're just going to kind of overview the timeline of this issue. So between 2005 and 2017, there were a series of like um, space missions launched. Um, and then in 2018, the FCC authorized SpaceX to launch four, over 4,000 satellites. 
Um, and in 2020, the de development of the terahertz chip happened, which is kind of the technology that's allowing 6G to be developed. Um, and then looking forward, it's projected by 2026 uh, that Amazon, Web, and SpaceX will have launched over 4,000 satellites, and the 6G, 6G is projected to roll out around 2030. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of possibilities for how to mitigate um, co the coexistence uh, with 6G. So um, one is communication facilitated by the FCC between space-related agencies and 6G developers to kind of like catch this problem early while 6G is being developed. Um, there's also possibilities for spectrum sharing, which we're going to talk about in the next slide, um, of just kind of of changing the way that spectrum allocation is done so that uh, different things can operate within the same frequency bands. Um, and then there needs to be continued research um, in how frequency bands can be shared between fixed and mobile services. Um, DISH is currently trying to do some research in the five gigahertz, or in for 5G. Um, and so hopefully this research would uh, also apply to 6G. Uh, and for our proposed solution, we are looking towards uh, technology that is still emerging. Um, so first, uh, we want to point out a new technology called non-orthogonal multiple access, or uh, abbreviated as NOMA. Uh, this is a technology that allows uh, multiple users to operate on the same frequency at the same time um, by having different messages encoded in different power levels and having certain receivers, uh, the SICK receiver, uh, to be specific, which stands for successive uh, interference cancellation, um, that can parse through these different power levels. Um, Additionally, there is research um, going in. Uh, there is a lot of research right now, uh, secondly through academia, about using artificial intelligence to optimize spectrum sharing and resource allocation. Um, currently, there is a lot of uh, research, especially in the field of uh, ultra dense networks. Um, so more in the unlicensed fields or unlicensed uh, um, frequency bands, but. Um, there is speculation in the industry that this uh, technology can be used uh, in broader in broader applications. Uh, currently, the way frequency is allocated is that you go to the FCC, the FCC gives you a frequency, um, and you have full control over that frequency. Um, but there is speculation that that policy can change towards more of a spectrum sharing approach, um, where AI can be, and since AI is going to be uh, massively uh, a massive part of 6G, um, there is uh, that a possible solution um, is that that uh, spectrum sharing can replace um, a frequency allocation system. All right, that is our presentation. Thank you all for listening.